Hello everyone, my name is Jeff Neville and welcome to Selective Imagery. Welcome to the Wonders of Nature Photography, Part 1. One of the best parts of being a nature and wildlife photographer is you never know what you may see and the unusual behavior you will witness on any given day. Even your best laid plans can fall flat because try as you may, nature does what it wants to on its own schedule, not ours. But if you don't get out and experience it, you're missing out on so much that can bring joy, amazement, and amusement to your life. Some mornings start off with a glorious display of color. You just sit there in amazement and enjoy it. You take a stroll on the beach, the color washes over the ripples in the sand. You look around to see if there's anything of interest. Even a bare shrub can look good with a colorful background. You walk some more and you're very fortunate to find a ghost crab, which normally you're not gonna see in the early morning light. And then you see, well, let's just say nature being nature, right? Spoils are left for the victors, and sometimes multiple gulls will feed on the same food source for a while. Now, other days can leave you in a bit of a fog. You don't know what you might get, but it's worth hanging around to see what happens, because when the fog lifts, you can get something beautiful, like this mute swan taking a little bit of a nap. Some days when entering the beach area, you run across these wild rabbits and they're eating some cord grass and just having a good time. Other times you see more interesting things in different areas. For example, here's a fiddler crab and you notice this little shake that it does at the beginning of the video and you may have to go back and look at it again but when it's kind of squatched down the large claw the body shakes a little bit and I apologize for the movement but this is with the 800 with the 2.3 time crop but if I slowed it down you wouldn't see that little shake of the large claw when it squats down which is very interesting behavior of course it's trying to attract a mate I'm sure is what it's trying to do Like I said, you never know what you're going to see. Here, a small gator rushes by on his way to the pond. An oyster catcher lands looking for some food, and a pelican relaxes in the early morning light and a little bit of a close-up of this friend. Some kayakers are out there enjoying the weather. And here we have a bald eagle scouting out looking for some fish. This is just a little black and white treatment on this bird. This Carolina wren is looking at those insects. And we got a toupee on this alligator. Here's a yellow legs looking for food in the early morning. And some gators hanging out, just laying in the water and hugging the grass is here. 
little food, little fight here between a couple of snowies and some still images of the glossy ibis gulping down giant tadpoles. And here, here is one where you can look at the beautiful coloration and the light. And we're going to have a video clip here of a, uh, a single glossy got one down these tadpoles. And then we have a, a little blue heron there that hasn't uh, turned blue yet next to it. But you can see, you know, really, really how much that this glossy takes down. And there were a number of them in, in the pond here. And I don't think it was, I mean, maybe it was a week and then you didn't see them too much after that. I mean, they wiped out these tadpoles really, really quick, but they just don't stop eating. Kind of like a cormorant when it's uh, cormorants come in to eat fish. I mean, they just, they'll eat 12 or more fish, a decent size and all one right after another. And you don't know how they pack it in. So when you get, you know, if you live in an area where you get hundreds of cormorants coming in, it can wipe out the fish population really, really quick. And the funny thing is, in this uh, this pond area, I've never heard bullfrogs at all, so I have no clue where the tadpoles came from. Um, you know, a few bullfrogs must have sneaked over from the other pond. And uh, here's some oyster catcher shots. And another video clip of a group of glossies feeding. And you see some yellow legs in the background. A little harder for them to get the food. I mean, they, these glossies are, are getting their food by feel, not because they can see it. Whereas the yellow legs, you know, with all the muck here in the pond and the grasses, it's a lot harder for them to find their food. I mean, it's going to be small insects and that they may see, you know, on the top of the grasses or um, if they're lucky, they'll be able to get some small fish. But I'll let you just enjoy this video for a minute or so before we move on. As you can see, they, they don't quit here, they don't give up. But when they're like really on top of each other, I mean, they're, you know, <laughs> you'd think they'd want to be more spread out so they're not trying to cover basically the same area to get their food. And this one's really trying to pick this one out of the grasses, finally gobbles it, gobbles it down. And um, this next still image is of, is of a yellow crowned night heron getting a drink. So here we'll have a few clips of the yellow crown night heron. A little bit of a drinking action going on here. Followed by a whole bunch of preening. I'll tell you, the birds uh, worry about making themselves look pretty a lot more than uh, us men do. <laughs> That's for sure. Spent an awful lot of time 
trying to look perfect. Coming up is just a quick shot of a black brown night heron surrounded by foliage. And then going back to the yellow crown night heron again. A few shots, still images. And now you get to see the black crown drinking some water. So it hasn't been uh, pretty, pretty rare when you spot one getting a drink. They hide pretty well. And this is just a marsh walk shot. And bang, here's the wake up moment slide with the color and a gentleman enjoying the early morning on his boat. And a little green heron along with a quick video of this heron who had some really bad, was really itchy, had to do a lot of scratching this morning. It must hurt with the nails that are on some of these birds, I'll tell you. Here we have the common Galanoo, used to be called a moorhen, got renamed. Um, here's a few video clips of a few of them swimming around and, and trying to get some grasses. And it's funny, they'll pick, pick up a clump of grass and they'll put it back down because they like to get like the long strings of, of grass rather than uh, the stuff that's really, really clumpy. Here's three of them together. And we have a still of a very rare yellow-billed sparrow. So here we have a female cardinal followed by a group of tree swallows on a branch in the middle of the pond. You can see there's really no water there. This is going to be a bellowing indicator, and you're going to hear it in a second with some of the uh, bellowing sounds from uh, this video clip and another video clip. Um, and the, the thing here that's kind of unfortunate is that there's some areas in the clip where the audio will be cut off from the environment because there was someone that was talking while Bob and I were trying to film and I didn't want that person's voice in the video clip so I just deleted those sections from the clip. But um, they're very vocal. We were hoping that we were going to get another opportunity to possibly have one of these gators uh, went over the charm and be able to film the mating process again, but we'll talk about that a little bit more. But it's just interesting, the behavior. And if you're here at the right time of year and really the right day, um, you may be fortunate enough to catch this activity and see this. But there were, were quite a few vocalizing, trying to get the attention and you know, win the battle here. Uh, it's almost like a uh, the voice, right? We're going to have a contest here. Who sings the best? Now, this is where, uh, th this is like the next process, okay? So this one approaching, uh, touching the side of the face of the other, of the female, is the, uh, the winner of the contest, okay? So this is normally the next step in the mating process. There's a little nudging and touching, and then the female will move up a little bit, and then the male starts to, to move down and eventually they would normally, um, the male would get behind the female and then um, mount on top of her and the mating activity would occur. Unfortunately, that did not happen this day mainly because there was so much, this was right along the causeway of the park and 
at one point there was a very very large uh, RV that went by it was really loud and kind of ended the activity it ruined the mood and that was that so here's a few uh, glossy still images and here's a hummingbird in its nest which is really really uh, unique to get followed by a kill deer and a turn making an appearance and here's some great egrets showing off their feathers and hinga a black crowned night heron with a turtle in its mouth tricolor heron here it's got its wings out for shade trying to get fish and we got some gator images here and here we are with black skimmers so you're gonna see a whole bunch of shots from Wrightsville Beach in North Carolina as the skimmers uh, several varieties of terns and a few pairs of oyster catchers show up to court each other mate lay some eggs and have some babies so this is um, the same time Tim aka Mozman and I went last year and we were told that last year was an exception where uh, things happened about three weeks early uh, so basically we we're like well what was normal last year was basically three weeks early so coming at the same time we were too early this time around so we got to uh, you know I'm gonna have to go back and get some shots of the eggs and the babies um, maybe after Memorial Day week uh, we shall see and I'll use the new 600 PF that I just got and we'll see how that works out and will be a good test for that lens so hopefully uh, we'll get some shots worth sharing but as you can see here they had some they had some fake wooden birds in the sand and reason being is the other part of the beach area is having some dredging work done um, which is a common area for these birds to nest and they wanted to, to coerce them into going to a slightly different location so they put in the fake birds and it, it, it is apparently working the birds have shown up uh, you can see the sharing of the fish uh, that the terns do to try to attract a mate uh, many of them weren't having any luck. They were flying around with a fish hanging out of their mouth for quite a while. So, uh, you know, they had a little bit of a letdown. But there's one sitting on the egg right there, which is really cool. Uh, one of my favorite shots of the day, actually. But, uh, so you had turns and you had the, uh, some laughing gulls that were, well, laughing. Uh-huh. But they were playing with a piece of a... I'm assuming it was a piece of crab, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. And there was no, no meat in it or anything, but they were just like playing around with it and you know dropping it on the ground. Uh, this is one of the one of the two pairs of nesting oyster catchers. Um, the nests are not where you can see them. And these these are some uh, video clips not at Wrightsville Beach, but at the Merle's Inlet Marsh Walk, where there is a nesting pair of waster catchers uh, preparing the nest. The eggs, as far as I know, the eggs um, should be hatching somewhere around the first week of June. And they do the male and the female both. They do shifts. A friend of mine who's been watching these birds for 10 years and their mating habits and their nesting habits says that basically almost uh, on the hour they they switch places and that allows the other um, adult to go and get food and to preen itself and then to come back and sit on the eggs again now they like to pick up debris uh, could be pieces of oyster shells or pieces of cord grass and it's one thing to, to see them like throwing stuff out of the nest to keep the nest clean but um, this fella seems to be confused that he's throwing the stuff in the nest area 
and they, they actually pick and throw the stuff away, um, pick stuff up that's not even close to the nest. But I guess it's just a habit that they have, you know, it's like a nervous twitch of some kind. They, they always have to be picking something up and, and moving it around. So uh, during this nesting cycle, but it was kind of interesting to watch it. This is um, a rough green snake, and here's nice plumage on the great egret. This was at Huntington Beach State Park, and a uh, little green heron, several photos of a little green heron. Beautiful bird when you get the light on it, right? And this was a gator that uh, was crossing um, what was the road which to us is now a sidewalk. Semi-palmated plover. A few shots of a uh, great blue heron eating some fish. We will have a, uh, a video showing some of this feeding. Here we go. And boy, could it chomp things down! Now, unfortunately, this was the tide was the tide was has uh, was starting to come in, but it hadn't yet brought in any real large fish. But you know, so these are probably only about I'm guessing maybe three inches long at best. But it would it would do a number on them. It wasn't having any problem getting them. Here, it speared right through it, and it was trying to move it down. And get it off its bill and manage to do that and then swallow it without dropping it in the water so that's pretty amazing uh, bill dexterity so that's the show we hope you enjoyed part one of the wonders of nature photography and we will be uh, doing a part two at some point in time take care thank you for watching my channel i really appreciate it Please give me a like and leave a comment, pro or con, just please be respectful. And if you really enjoyed it, you know, please subscribe to my channel and remember my motto, enjoy life, capture some of it, get out there and get some of your best images, irregardless of the genre that you choose to shoot. As I mentioned weeks ago, I wouldn't be putting a lot of new content on the channel other than continuing the live stream on Saturday nights, but I figured it's been a little while. I'll put something out for you, let you know I've been keeping busy. This is only a small amount of what I've done uh, since I've cut back on doing videos. So there will be a part two, but I'm not sure when I'm going to get to it. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this. Um, I hope it gets you a little bit motivated to get out there and get some shots of your own so um, I hope you watched it I hope you enjoyed it and thank you very much take care bye